Do you know if Chip and Joanna sold the castle, or is that up on Airbnb? But um, we, uh, my kids are just love Magnolia Network and everything Chip and Joanna gains, as as do my wife and I. So, fair. Going to Waco is a is a is a big 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 bucket list thing for us. Nice. Yeah, Waco's cool. Um, mm. The if you go down by the silos, make sure you go during like one of their events. Like they'll do silobration or. Um, spring in the silos. You know, they, yeah. they've got a few of those that they do. That's kind of when everything's at its peak form. Very cool. Or if there's like a, fa- a fair or something going on. You know, that's just kind yeah. of when everything's kind of at its peak form. Well, that, that would be beautiful. You, yeah. uh, you're you definitely part of one of the one of the great, great cities in Texas. Yeah. 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 I, I enjoy you know? it. I love it. So. But you said you grew up in Chicago, though, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Nice. So do you still... Are you still close to all the Chicago sports teams, or have you graduated to Texas sports now? Um, so football and baseball, I am still 100% Chicago. Yeah. Uh, not going to play. And is it Sox or Cubs? Well, I mean. Oh, gotcha. I didn't even yeah. notice. I didn't even notice your Sox hat. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely Sox. Um, but anything other than baseball and football, I'm kind of a free agent at this point gotcha because like i mean i grew up a bulls fan but it's never going to get any better than it was in the 90s it's it's hard that was one of the golden eras for sport yeah you know not just not just the nba and not just the city of chicago yeah. but all sports yeah. you know if you you piece together all the great moments that have ever happened in from tennis to boxing yeah to baseball football yeah. hockey what we experienced in the 90s with Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls yes. is one of the most extraordinary things that that sport yeah. has ever, ever, ever seen. And nobody's ever going to duplicate it. Yeah, I agree. So. Golden State tried and LeBron have tried and everything like that. But I no, Jordan, Jordan's the GOAT. He really is. You talk like you were born in Chicago or something. or well, you I, just I just love the city. Yeah. Except sure. I'm... I'm, uh, you know, pr- pretty loyal in terms of, of baseball to uh, to the Chicago Cubs. Uh, okay. Uh, got to know Tom Ricketts and the Ricketts uh, family yeah. uh, over the years, and um, you know, been able to do uh, several uh, anthems at Wrigley yeah. uh, over the years. So it's really, really special getting a chance to to go there. But I've seen a Sox game before, and um, <clears throat> yeah, seen quite a few Blackhawks games. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, at uh, at the Madhouse. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, Chicago is is definitely one of the not just one of the greatest cities in America, but I think it's one of the most unique cities on the planet. So big, yeah. big Chicago guy here, too. Nice, nice. So we just kind of rolled into this interview. Uh, we got Brett Kissel joining us here oh, at CRS. Yeah, sorry, dude. dude here I no, am. It, it's all good. I, I like it when it just kind of rolls yeah. in. It just feels natural. And we don't even have to talk country music. Let's just keep talking sports. <laughs> right? <laughs> Except I think they'd be... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, so excited to have you on. I'm really glad that we got a chance to sit down and chat. Um... So besides Chicago sports, how are things uh, going for you? Uh, well, for me, it's been a it's been an amazing 2023, and now we're really uh, celebrating in 2024. I had a great, great single with uh, uh, Cooper Allen, who's you know a big TikTok star and just yeah. an amazing um, you know country artist here here in America that everybody loves. Uh, so uh, we had a single. We wrote a song together called Two of Us. Mm-hmm. And so right now it's number six on, on the charts in Canada. We're very proud of that. And, you know, it's going to keep climbing. Uh, I released four albums last year. Yes, four albums, nice. which is wild. Uh, you know, it's called The Compass Project. So North, East, Southwest, all four different subgenres of country music. So we're very, very excited about how that all came together and how it was all released. And now in 2024, we're touring. Uh, especially up in Canada where I grew up. So we've got a bunch of tour dates and a bunch of great dates coming down the pipe uh, now in uh, in America too. So it's going to be really good. Nice. Now is the uh, country scene up in Canada, it's pretty strong, right? It's yeah, you know, there's there's no denying it's it's the it's the second biggest market for, for yeah. country music uh, on the planet. You know, of course, second to America. Um, but a lot of great artists now are doing so well in Nashville yeah. that are from Canada. You look at Madeline Merlot and High Valley, James Barker Band, they just had their debut on the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. Tennille Arts had a number one on yeah. American Country Radio. Uh, Tennille Towns. Uh, of course, then you have the greats like Anne Marie back in the yeah. 70s. Shania Twain. Yep. One of the greatest yep. uh, 
you know, of all time. Josh Ross is doing so good. So proud of Josh. So Canadians are uh, are, are doing uh, doing pretty good right now. We're, we're 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 proud of each other. Nice, nice. So whereabouts? You, so you you're from Canada. Yeah. Uh, whereabouts in Canada did you grow up? Uh, the province is called Alberta. Okay. So we're north of Montana, and it's oil and cattle up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my family's been in the cattle business for many years, and if they're not in the cattle business, they're in the oil business. So, um, yeah, really proud of, uh, you know, the energy sector. Yeah. We just have a wonderful, wonderful province. We're uh, very, very strong, uh, wonderful people, hardworking, uh, similar to Texas. Fair. You know, yeah. you, you don't, don't mess with Texas, and yeah. Alberta definitely beats to, to its own drum, too. Yeah, for sure. We've got a real life um, Yellowstone situation going on if you're with the cattle and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, not not as many trips to the to the train station. Yeah, as uh, as on Yellowstone with Rip and you know and Kevin Costner and all that stuff. But the reality is is that we we do have beautiful land yeah. and it's been in our family uh, on the Kissel Ranch for you know 114 years. Oh wow! Nice. I bought it from my grandparents. Uh, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm the fifth generation, and now my wife and I and our kids, so we'll, that, that makes the sixth generation. So it's really, really important to keep that land in the family and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and enjoy it. Nice. So growing up, was um, country music kind of always there? Were your parents musical, or how's that kind of come into play? Uh, you know, country music was always there, but no, my parents were never musical. Of course, everybody loves music, and, and you know, we respect country music greatly, but uh, it was always around us just on the radio and yeah. um, my grandparents had uh, an outstanding record collection mm-hmm. and so I would listen to Farron Young and Marty Robbins Willie Nelson Waylon Jennings Johnny Cash Charlie Pride uh, so I listened to traditional country a yeah. lot but we um, but no like we they, they never played music mm-hmm. uh, so why I picked up a guitar and became an artist is still a mystery For- to my mom and my dad and my whole family and why, why I'm, I'm doing it and even able to make a living is, is wild and crazy. It really is. But I love it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it, it's one of those unsolved mysteries. That it really is, yeah. It's just kind of a blessing out there. So Yeah. For sure. Uh, so kind of looking at 2024, you said you're doing a lot of touring this year and playing a lot of shows. Um, are you looking at, like, the next release or where, where are you kind of at release-wise? You know, I'm always thinking about new music, of course, mm-hmm. and as a songwriter, you know, if you've got a great idea and inspiration strikes, you have to you have to follow that creative spirit wherever it takes yeah. you. However, all that being said, after releasing so much music last year, I'm not saying we need to take a break, yeah. but I definitely want to take a breather um, and reevaluate yeah. where, where everything is at. And it's a very important part of the creative process yeah. to do that. So that you don't just rush into the next thing. Yeah. So I got to think about what the next record is going to be, what these next songs are going to be like. So that's very important to me. For sure. Do you think these next songs are already written or are they still pondering down around you? Your... It's it's a little bit of both. Okay. You know, I, I if you think of a 10-song record, yeah. I've got five songs that I'm sitting on right now that I absolutely love. Yeah. That I truly believe that will will be on the record or, or yeah. could be singles to, to country radio. Yeah. But, you know, how do you round off the record? And can you beat those songs? That's the beauty. Yeah. Can I write this month, the next month, over the next several months, can I write songs that are better than what I've got? Because if you can, then you know you've got something very special. Yeah. A wise man named Rusty Gaston, who's president of Sony, Sony Publishing, um, you know, he told me earlier on in my career, I had a couple great songs, that he was proud of them and I was proud of them, and he says, now that's your bar. We know and we've established that these are great songs. Yeah. Now go beat them. Yeah. Go beat them because if you can, then you really have a great record. Fair. Fair. That's, it's always good to have somebody that can kind of put things into perspective and explain it in a way that, you know, A, makes sense because yeah. sometimes it just doesn't make sense. But yeah. B, it also motivates you to keep moving forward. Well, that motivation is very important because... You're going to, you know, obviously, if you, you've, you've met with several artists today, yeah. you're going to meet with 100 artists over the course of Country Radio Seminar here yeah. in Nashville. And all of us have the same dream. We all have the same goal. And the reality is, is that in this business, there's only a few slots for, for everybody. There's only one Tim McGraw. Yeah. There's only one Garth Brooks. There's only one George Strait, one Cody Johnson. Yeah. 
And so you have to either create your lane or you have to fill a space. And so we're all working towards that. And you can do that if you write great songs. Yeah. You can do that if you've got great relationships. You can do that if you're kind to people. And if you really build a brand, you can do that. Yeah. And that's what we're all trying to do here as rising stars. So it's a, it's a very, very beautiful process and a wonderful place to be. Nice. Nice, nice. So kind of looking forward... Uh, is there a place that you haven't played yet that you'd really like to, as far as, like, v states or venues or... Well, when we were talking about Waco, Texas, you know, yeah. I, I really want to come to Waco. Um, I'd love to meet Chip and Joanna Gaines one day and, I don't know, play a set at the silos yeah. or something. Fair. That would be really cool. Um, one day I would certainly love to play Buck Owens' Crystal Palace in mm -hmm. Bakersfield. I'd love to play the Troubadour in, uh, in L.A. Uh, you know, maybe just maybe I could open for you too at the sphere in yeah. vegas how cool would that be it's the sphere you know? is, i've not been there yet but that looks so cool like, it, what a, it looks like the the coolest venue in the history of the world yeah really yeah um so no yeah it does i i need to get to vegas it's been a few years so yeah it's been a minute for me too but nice so uh looking at the rest of this weekend how, are you staying here all weekend or i am yeah you know my wife and i we actually moved to Nashville in 2010, uh -huh. even though we have the ranch back home in Alberta. Um, so we, we definitely go back and forth a lot. We, we love our spot here in Nashville. I'll be here for a week or so and then uh, back up to the ranch and back on the tour bus, and we're going to continue to perform. So, yep. But it's going to be a very good CRS week for, for me and, and my whole team. Awesome. And then just really quick, outside of music, what do you like to do? What, what uh, well, I love hockey, even though I don't uh, I don't play anymore. Uh, big Edmonton Oilers fan. Uh, they're my favorite team, and got a lot of buddies who play on the team. So it's great watching them. And nice. whenever I get the opportunity to sit down and watch hockey, or obviously go go to the rink and uh, and watch them play, it's yeah. it's it's one of my favorite things. Nice. And I love to play cards too. Playing cards is one of my favorites too. For, hockey was one of the things I was into as a kid. And then when the Blackhawks started winning and everybody was all of a sudden a Blackhawks fan, I was like, no. You're over it? I'm over it. So. Well, you know, that was a golden era, and, you know, that from 20, uh, 10, I think, yeah, 2010, 2013, or 2015, they won yeah. cups, or 14 and 15. Yeah. It's, uh, it was pretty amazing. Patrick Kane, Johnny Taves. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Sharp, Keith Seabrook. Yep. And what a, what a, that was a stacked team. Yeah. It, it was, was a really stacked good team. team, and I think they're. Like, I don't follow it that closely, but I think they're on their way to doing something really special again. So Well, you know, you got Connor Bedard and yeah. stuff like that. They're they're gonna do good. They're they were just riddled with injuries this year, yeah. but uh Chicago's gonna bounce back. They got right. a great ownership group and they uh they don't like losing. Yes. So yes. if you're addicted to winning, you're gonna figure out what you gotta do to get back there. For sure. For sure. But once again I really appreciate you. If anybody wants to check out your music or interact with you on socials, any of that fun stuff, where's the best place to find you? Well, the website is brettkissel.com. We're loving that uh, people can follow me on Spotify and save my music to their playlists on Apple Music, of course. And um, and then, yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. It's just Brett Kissel, as awesome. simple as that. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much. Really appreciate you thank taking you, the sir. time to sit down and chat. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we will see you all here in a bit.